What's up, y'all? My name is Devonte, and I sacrificed my time so you don't have to. Ah, this is not based at all. I'm like caught between a rock and a hard place. A catch-22, if you will. I'm thinking to myself, which is worse currently at the moment? Having to review WrestleMania Night 2 after the debacle that was WrestleMania Night 1 last night? Or the realization that this is my last day before my vacation? <sighs> Neither one of those things are based! None of it is based. None of it. I hate it all. I hate each decision. And fuck you all for, you know, not pulling me out of this despair. I might have to skibbity myself in Minecraft thanks to you guys. But before I do that, I should probably at least acknowledge the fact that I ran through the gauntlet. I ran through the gambit, okay? What did I say I was going to do two weeks ago, damn near? I laid out my schedule. I told you, Saturday, I was going to review WrestleMania 22. I told you, Monday, Bray Wyatt documentary, Raw review, Tuesday, NXT, Wednesday, Dynamite, Friday, SmackDown, Saturday, NXT, Stand and Deliver, WrestleMania Night 1, and here I am now at a WrestleMania Night motherfucking too and even better i'll give you guys a little bit of an epilogue from this horrible i mean honestly this is pretty shitty i, I hated the schedule i hate doing all you know i love it i fucking love it who am i kidding editing and doing youtube is so fucking easy now compared to where it was when i first started like five or six years ago that it doesn't even fucking bother me anymore to the point that i'm now contemplating whether or not i want to do another project because this channel is absolutely missing a project and i need to get a project on there i had like four of them on my own millennial smart channel Need to get one on this channel immediately. But, uh, yeah, I feel good about my sheriff right about now. I feel, I feel good. I knew I would. All right, let's get to it. Oh, and also, again, I'll give you guys a little bit of an epilogue. As I said yesterday, a little bit of a reminder. Uh, I will tomorrow be reviewing Monday Night Raw. I get off at 6 o'clock in the afternoon, or I guess evening. I made that same mistake twice saying that shit, didn't I? fucking retarded but i will be reviewing raw tomorrow night it is the night after wrestlemania i feel at the very least i should like cover it one more time just to kind of like put a little bit of a button a little bit of a bow tie on that not to mention i'm going to be reviewing nxt every week now and smackdown as per normal and dynamite so kind of nothing really changed and then also i'm going to do a saturday review for a new retro pay-per-view which by the way you guys can vote on when i upload it on friday on when i put it up on the community post on wednesday so damn am i really taking a vacation i feel like i'm doing everything all over again minus the bray wyatt one and like you know an nxt pay-per-view or a wwe pay-per-view fuck i base off oh, fuck i screwed myself again you know what fuck you guys okay fuck you guys fuck you all fuck you all fuck you all <sighs> okay let's see what we have for wrestlemania night two seth rollins versus drew mcintyre eo sky versus bailey Logan Paul versus Randy Orton versus Kevin Owens, LA Knight versus AJ Styles, The Pride versus The Final Testament, and a street fight match, and Roman Reigns versus Cody Rhodes. It sounds like a very exciting card. So exciting, am I at? I can't take it. I can't help it. I had to sit on my toilet and I had to skibbity myself right out of my asshole. So, with that being said, can you guys skibbity with me outside of your assholes into the nearest toilet? Damn, that was a wet ass, terrible break. That was gross. Okay, all right. No more burping. No more stalling. No more talking about my woes. And no more talking about skibbitying ourselves in Minecraft. Because you two might pick up on what the fuck that means. And you guys still want me around, right? Well, some of you don't, but that's because I fucked your moms. With that being said, though, let's continue on with WrestleMania Night 2. I'll kill you! You know, there is. A weird part of me. I'm never gonna say weird. There's a humane part of me because you gotta take this. And I'm gonna look. I'm gonna look at this from a realistic standpoint, not just from a kayfabe sense. Because the kayfabe sense, I don't give a shit about. I'm looking at this simply from a real life standpoint, right? I'm looking at Drew Galloway, and he's celebrating with the championship belt. And you gotta know. You gotta know this is just amazing to him like real life shoot amazing to him because this is his first time winning the championship belt at wrestlemania this is his first time holding on to the championship belt in front of fans at wrestlemania i know he's ecstatic i know he loves all of this and it's great to see drew mcintyre the world heavyweight champion i guarantee you he's going to carry it with pride and i guarantee you it's going to be a fun run because drew mcintyre has put himself into a position that I can see him being a very, very credible, fun champion. And then you have to look at Seth Rollins, right? 
Then you have to look at the real man, Kobe Lopez. And you got to feel for him. You, you honestly have to feel for him. Hang on for a second. He's actually looking at Hang on. Hang on, guys. Okay, what the fuck? Okay, what the fuck? What the fuck? I had to press pause. I, I, what the fuck? What the fuck? Damian Priest is the new world champion. Literally in mid-sentence as I'm talking about this, this happens. Damian Priest is your new world champion. Folks, now I feel bad for Drew Galloway. No, no, I felt bad for Seth, and I was just praising Drew. Now I'm, now I I feel bad for Drew. Oh no, oh oh no. I don't. Okay. So let's go over this real quick, folks. So, I was going to talk about Kobe. Oh, no, Drew. Drew. And CM Punk is clapping. This is actually happening in real time. Oh, my God. Oh, oh, my God. Okay, so Seth had this match with Drew McIntyre, right? He had his match with Drew. It was a great match. Don't get it twisted. These guys were not there, and they killed it. Drew started off the match with a Claymore kick. And, and then they battled some more. Seth hit a pedigree on the floor, right? They're battling some more. They get in the ring. Now, granted, it starts to become somewhat of a spam fest with the... um with the claymore kicks but they had some stuff in between right you even had a gnarly curb stump from one announcement table to drew mcintyre who was bending over on the other announcement table right in front of cm punk who's on commentary the entire time right eventually seth gets inside the ring to attack drew mcintyre some more after he throws him in the ring he gets hit with a claymore kick seth kicks out of it mind you this is like his fourth claymore kick he's kicking out of right drew hits him with another Claymore kick. I think Seth kicked out of that one too, if I'm not mistaken, right? And he attempts the last Claymore kick. And Seth is like, you're gonna have to kill me. You're gonna have to kill me. And Drew, headshot right in the head. Takes out Seth Rollins. One, two, three. Drew McIntyre is your new world champion. Or so we fucking think. He goes out to the ring. He's celebrating. You have Seth outside of the ring. And you can see the look on his face. He, he He's crying. And Seth tells you it's not a lot of acting. Folks, like I was saying earlier before I go on further with this segment, Seth's been looking like a complete dork as of late. And like I said, I think it's more so the real man looking at himself and saying to himself does this company really respect me anymore think about it for a second like i said it's not so much about the character seth rollins now we're talking about kobe lopez think about the position he's been in with this company since coming back for his injury he's been made to look like a third will and another feud that he lost in right he's been humiliated left and right his title buried after after a whole year of building it up so much done to kobe to get into the position that he was in. He finally made events WrestleMania and he loses. Just to come to the next night of WrestleMania and he loses again. And this time he loses his world championship belt. After coming back from injury, thinking to himself that he was going to go against, go up against CM Punk and most likely retain in that match. Think about it for a second. Almost everything that Seth had to go through always came back as a detriment on him he goes on social media he sees people like me clowning him because he has a shitty gimmick a shitty character and he's trying so hard to find himself and the only thing he can find himself with then that's somewhat getting over is this character but at the same time it's a catch 22 and like i said i do I honestly do feel bad for Seth. It doesn't mean that I'm not going to criticize his gimmick. It doesn't mean that I'm not going to criticize how he carries himself. But I do indeed feel bad for the man who's trying his best to do his job. And like I said, for all the jokes that I say about Seth Rollins, for all the things that I say about Seth Rollins, even though I dislike his character, even though I dislike his gimmick, 
I'm not gonna turn away from the fact and say that I don't respect Seth Rollins. I do respect Kobe Lopez as, if nothing else, a fellow worker, an employee to another employee who went out there and he did his job to the best of his abilities. And even though it came at the detriment of himself, he got everybody over at the expense of himself. Give credit where credit is due. You ain't got to like Seth. I'm not one of the guys who likes Seth. But at the same time, he did his job. He did the job by doing his job. And for that, all respect in the row. A damn near year long title reign. All for nothing. But all for nothing on his behalf. Because look what it did in the end of the day. It built up Drew McIntyre and it built up CM Punk. It got Damian Priest over when he cashed in on Drew McIntyre after CM Punk attacked him. Seth did everybody a favor. He got everybody over at the expense of himself. And for that, you got to give respect. And honestly, hopefully he gets a raise in his contract. Hopefully, whatever he does going forward, because now you can't even foresee the next feud for Seth Rollins. That's how bad of a position he's in right now. One can argue that he somewhat sacrificed his year-long reign to get everybody over at the expense of himself. And like I said, hate him, love him, respect him. But enough of that shit right there. Hey, look, it's Bubba Ray Daly. That's what's up. You had CM Punk because Drew McIntyre is like all up in fucking his... He's like all up inside CM Punk's face, gloating, shoving the belt directly in his face. For CM Punk to get pissed off and trip him up on the announcement table, right? He trips him up on the announcement table. He has his little fucking arm brace thing that he has on. He puts it on his arm and he starts attacking Drew McIntyre with it, just beating the shit out of him. And guess who comes out? Damian fucking Priest, who throws Drew McIntyre back in the ring and he hits him with a self of heaven choke slam for the win. Hey, let me see Bubba Ray theme song. Sorry, I was curious what, what uh, theme song did they play from the Deli Boys. So I was wondering, like, was it Bubba Ray's, um, you know, original do 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 and now Drew Ma and now Damian Priest is the world heavyweight champion. Which is fine. It's cool, I guess. It's another cash in at WrestleMania. I was wondering when he was gonna do it. The question is now going forward, what's gonna happen, right? What what I mean, is it gonna be a triple threat match with Seth, Damian, and Drew? Or are we gonna get Drew versus Damian Priest? Are we gonna get Seth and Damian Priest while Drew is focused on CM Punk? I don't know, but hopefully, like I said, they can stay committed to this whole brand split shit. And, you know, if you play your cards right, Damian Priest can actually get over pretty well if you keep him on one shot. As a matter of fact, quick question. Has Damian Priest now? I'm curious. Did Damian Priest ever win the United States Championship or the Intercontinental Championship? Let me see something real quick. I'm actually really curious about this. Oh, he's got to be trending right now. Um, let me see something. Championships and accomplishments. WWE. Yeah. Yeah, he's a former United States champion. So with that, with this world championship win, he's a triple crown champion. So congratulations to Damian Priest. He's a triple crown champion. Um, like I said, everything about this was surprising. Um, spectacular. I'm going to boost the star ratings up on that and actually give it like a three and three quarters just because of all the things that took place, folks. Because I know people and I heard like one or two people say earlier about my star rating system. Oh, Devontae, why do you grade like this? It's not just simply because of the match in itself, folks. The match in itself, the actual performance. No, it's not that that actually curtails to the overall rating of the show. If the ambiance is great, if the overall performance is great, and if everything is memorable, that also plays into the show. It's not just the match rating in itself. If I give all my matches three stars and I give it an eight out of ten, it has more to do with not just the matches, but everything else that surrounded the match. I thought that was pretty obvious, but for some of you who are curious, that's how that operates. But with that being said, we have the Philadelphia Street Fight next, so let's get to that. I talked about this long enough. 
Okay, tonight's almost already better than night one. <laughs> like, already, night two, it's already damn near better than night one. Yeah, that was a fun match. That was a really, really fun match with the Pride versus the Final Testament. With, you know, some some here and there. So we, got, we got some botches. We, we got some botches. We got some botches. Now, I will say, Snoot Dogg, yo, you know, he was funny as fuck. You know, he 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 was funny. He brought the hood to commentary. I, I fuck with Snoop Dogg on commentary, bro. I swear to God, the amount of times I heard this man damn near slip and say the word nigga, it took every motherfucking being in this man's body to not go, what's this nigga doing? I swear to God. He, I, he almost said he almost dropped the, uh, a F-bomb. He almost said fuck too. I, bro, props to... Process Newt Dog for keeping it copacetic. You feel me? Keeping it copacetic. But um, we have Bubba Ray Dudley, as I said before in the previous segment. Uh, he was a special guest referee for this match, and you know he played his role very, very well. Forgot he was even the referee for this match until you know Karrion Cross got in his face. We got some pretty decent spots, you know, kendo sticks galore. Obviously, it's a WWE event. You gotta have kendo sticks right in your street fight match. Uh, some chair shots. Uh, got, or not? What, did we, yeah, chair shots. You got a um a net break on the chair for Karrion Cross to Bobby Lashley. Um, we got the girls, um, B-Fab and Scarlet. They took a bump through a table on the outside of the ring. That was crazy. That was cray-cray, not for the real real, and not for the play-play either. Um, so, we get to this spot, right? Which, by the way, I will I actually will notate one more spot, which actually was really cool. Fucking Montez Ford is a goddamn maniac. This motherfucker, bruh, he, you know how he does his little plancha over the ropes? He did this in NXT before, too, a couple of years ago, but never to this degree. The height that Montez Ford got on that motherfucking Santon over the, what the hell? What the hell was that? Over the post was fucking crazy, bro. This motherfucker flipped clear over the ring post. It was goddamn cool. He damn near went inside the crowd. Honestly, if AOP wasn't there to catch him, I think he would have died. I, I swear to God. But we get to the spot, in my opinion, of the night where you have Bubba Ray Dudley, where uh, Kerry Cross got in his face and he was pushing him because he thought he would have got a two count or he did get a two count thinking it was a three count. Bubba Ray Dudley put on his shades, right? You know, the you know, Bubba Ray shades, you know, with the tape in the middle, the, you know, the, it's the Dudley, but it's the Dudley boys, right? And um, but uh, the uh, the three guys from the pride, they end up jumping Kerry and Cross and they get him into a position for a what's that? Which, by the way, popped the fuck out of me. I got super, super, super nostalgic. Because it's the Deli Boys. It is what's up! Let's go. So, they put him in a what's up. And, you know, Angelo Dawkins did the headbutt into the nuts. And then Bubba Ray asked all three members of the Pride. And all three members of the Pride asked each other. Should we get the table? Get the tables! Which they did. They got the tables, and, um, yeah. So, whoever does the uh, gimmicks, yeah, might want to go start looking for another job, but you might want to put in your job application, because I don't think you're going to be around for very long. They put Karrion Cross on top of the table, and that shit immediately, like, disintegrated. Like, it didn't even, like, like you know how the legs fall down and shit like that? Nah. Nah, I mean, like, that motherfucker disintegrated, and it's like, ooh that looked really bad i mean yeah they recovered the crowd you know especially it being feely i don't remember hearing them saying you fucked up you fucked up they continued out the spot they got a new table brought into the ring and you know fortunately carrier cross was put on the table and montez four hit a um from the heavens uh frog splash and got the win off of that uh, bobby lashley Pin carrying cross off of the frost splash through the table, and Snoop Dogg came in the ring, and they started getting down with their passos. They started to jive, um, and like I said, it was a fun match. Well, let's say it was a slight. Would I say that from like your traditional wrestling stepper was it good? You know, it varies. But as far as the aesthetic of it, as far as actually how fun it was as a match as a whole with Bubba Ray, the Bodge, uh, Snoop Dogg on commentary, the match in itself really not being that bad. I'm very. I'm gonna give this three stars. I, I I thought this was good enough to get at least three stars. I thought this was fine. But with that being said, like I said, this night's already turned out to be better than night two. Let's continue on with the motherfucking show now, shall we? I think we shall. It's WrestleMania. Yeah, another good match. Another good match. Now I'm not gonna say that this was a banger of a match. I'm not gonna sit here and lie to you and say like these guys went out there and they had a five star classic. This was just a normal 
solid perfectly placed wrestlemania match this this felt like it deserved to be like on the second spot or the third spot of the card this would have been perfectly fine in the main event of smackdown or a main event of raw this would have been perfect as a penultimate or even an opener at a normal pay-per-view like i said as far as the placement is considered as far as the booking is considered yeah they did these guys right and i don't know how you guys feel about this now you can obviously say like as far as WWE career, this is by far LA Knight's best match of his whole WWE career, and it's not even fucking close. When you think about all the matches LA Knight has had in the past, this is by far his best match. Uh, and with AJ Styles, uh, not his best match in his WWE career, but I would say I, I make a strong argument this is his best WrestleMania match he's ever had. I mean, you think about the past matches uh, LA Knight, um, uh, AJ Styles has had. You were talking about, like, what, Jericho? Yeah, I mean, the one, maybe you can argue me you know i say it's the second best match i think the shane mcmahon match how fucking funny is it that aj styles best matches happens to be with an la night i mean this guy went up against jericho this guy went up against shinsuke nakamura this guy went up against edge and his two best wrestlemania matches he's ever had is probably going to be shane mcmahon and la night how fucking crazy is that right I mean, just in consideration compared to the other names that were mentioned. But nevertheless, though, um, these guys were not there and they just had a fun match. It was just a fine, fine, solid, fun match. You know, you got some really, really cool reversals. You got a German suplex off the top of the turnbuckle, which I thought was pretty solid from LA Knight. Um, you got a nice little combination count move with uh, uh, AJ Styles in the German suplex. I thought he was going to go into like the rolling German suplex a la Benoit, but he had like a German suplex and then he followed directly up with like a wheelbarrow face buster, which I thought looked really, really cool. Uh, like I said, a bunch of counters. I like, you know, it's like the little small things. Like I said, I appreciate matches like this. This got the Benoit angle WrestleMania, uh, WrestleMania a 17 spot i like the spot where uh la knight went for the bf team and then immediately uh, uh aj styles hits a roll up i don't know it's just things like that it's like really really small things that wrestlers don't really do anymore or it's not as tight or it's not as i don't want to say um competent because it's not as if the wrestlers who do do it aren't competent you just don't see it anymore i like to see the small things in professional wrestling you know really really thrive Un like unlike seeing constantly you know big moves having to be hit in every single spot oh guys have to do these over the top fucking moves no something as simple as a bft counter into a roll-up that looked really smooth was good enough you know you had aj styles try to go for the phenomenal forearm uh, la knight pushed him and he hit his stomach on the ropes he brought him into the ring and he hit him he hit him off rip with the bft to get the win it was a fun match. And also, AJ Styles has a new theme song, by the way. I don't remember hearing the theme song on SmackDown. Maybe I'm just late to the game, but, I mean, this is the first time I'm hearing it. So, And, you know, like I said, overall, LA Knight, super over with the crowd. Uh, AJ Styles, you know, he got some heel heat. I like that also. You got a traditional heel and a traditional face. Again, this was just a very, very, very basic foundation solid fundamentals wrestling match and you just don't get matches like that every day that's why i probably appreciate it more than probably most people it's just a solid straight up three and i'll probably go i probably go three and a quarter honestly just a solid three and a quarter smackdown main event television match i i just wish we had more traditional matches like that i don't know like the only thing that i would say that was bad about this entire thing again was the build i mean you got some things here and there with the house break in and you know the 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 security guard stuff with la night it just never really felt like it was that heated you know what i mean it never felt like that it ever hit that um that second gear at least for me but i guess that's just the theme of wrestlemania overall outside of the main event right <clears throat> yeah but um yeah like i said fun match solid match i think any promoter will want this type of match on their card guys did their thing good shit really good shit yeah again another really really fun match so we already came to the consensus already right we, we've already come to the consensus this is the better night of wrestlemania finally the streak has been broken night two of wrestlemania I keep burping. <laughs> night two of WrestleMania finally demolishes night one of WrestleMania. Finally, I got it out of my system. 
Seriously though, this triple threat match kicked a lot of ass. I had a lot of fun watching it. This was really, really fun. So I like how they start at the entrance. You had Logan Paul come out in his stupid prime truck. And then you had Kevin Knowles paying tribute to his match with Austin in 2022. At least that's what I think he was doing. I know Michael Cole was bringing up some random, innocuous, stupid shit that I don't care about. Regardless though, he backed up, picked up Randy Orton. I thought they were going to crash and I was going to get another short. But not, unfortunately... Uh, I mean, fortunately, it didn't happen. And they had their triple threat match. They started off the match beating the crap out of Logan Paul, taking turns, giving him really, really high backdrops on the announcement table. Eventually, they got in the ring and they jumped him some more. Although, you know, this was inevitable. They had to turn on each other. That was funny, though. I actually liked that spot, how they both went for the pinfall. And then Kevin Owens was like, so do you want to do this now? Or do you want to keep beating up Logan Paul a little bit more? And Randy's like, no, we can beat up Logan Paul a little bit more. And Kevin Owens turns his back. He's like, okay, let's go do that. And then Randy tries to RKO him. And Kevin's like, dude. And Randy's like, I mean, can you blame me? I'm not. I mean, what What can I say? And Kevin's like, so we're going to do this or no? And Randy's like, yeah, we're going to do this. And then they start fighting. I thought that was actually fucking funny. And then eventually, as they're doing all that, we finally get to the point in the match where, um, because like, I got to say this again, L Logan Paul, he's so fucking athletic, bro. He's so fucking good. This motherfucker. So ignore the fact that he did a better buckshot lariat than CM Punk and Hangman Adam Page combined on to both Randy Orton and Kevin Owens. This motherfucker did a swan time bomb on Kevin Owens, bounced out of the Swan Time Bomb right into a standing frog splash onto Randy Orton. That was a cool fucking spot. I can't even front. That was really, really fucking cool. And as the match kept going on, you know, the guys are going back and forth, beating the crap out of each other. You know, double DDTs here. You got a, su a super power slam from Kevin Owens looking for the turnbuckle there. It was all over the fucking place, right? Well, Eventually, we got to the finish of the match where Logan Paul had brass knuckles and he ended up actually, you know what? I, I don't actually, I should point this out. And I felt like they kind of undercut this a little tiny bit because this is kind of a big fucking deal. Randy Orton hit the RKO on Kevin Owens and Kevin Owens kicked out. That's a big fucking deal. You can count literally maybe on one hand how many people kicked out of the RKO in the last, what, 21 years since Randy started doing it. And for them to just, like, not really harp on that, it's really, really fucking weird. Even the crowd didn't necessarily pop for the kick out. That was really, really, really weird that that just happened in the way that it happened. I don't like that at all. Nevertheless, though, continuing on, though, Randy Orton... Oh, Logan Paul had brass knuckles. He ended up hitting Randy Orton in the face with it. Randy kicked out of that, right? And then Kevin Knowles was right there, and he ended up hitting... <gasps> God damn, I need to drink some water. He ended up hitting Kevin Owens in the gut with the brass knuckles, and then he punched him in the face and knocked them out. I like that camera shot, too, how all three guys were laid out, and it just kind of pans around the ring, and it just kind of gets a shot on all three guys. That was really fucking cool, too. But eventually, you had uh, Randy Orton. He was he was going to get ready to get hit with the brass knuckles again, but then Kevin, but then he took the brass knuckles off of... Um, off of uh logan paul's hands and then he ended up giving it to that to the referee he was getting ready to punt him in the head before uh the prime bottle that was with logan paul his mascot came and pulled him out of the ring and you think to yourself is it one of his lackeys is it that ksi guy no it's that i show speed guy which i uploaded short i uploaded a short on it but yeah i mean I know who he is. He's one of those fucking black YouTuber guys who like to yell all the time. I mean, what kind of fucking guy yells all the fucking time and acts all fucking erratic for no fucking reason? What kind of goddamn simpleton? He's making the black people look bad with how with his antics. Why are you doing it, I show speed? Seriously, all the erratic, autistic fucking yelling and the stupid fucking random noises that you make, it's dumb. Look at me at my show speed and make retarded noise. You're making the black people look bad with your retarded yelling. Why are you doing that? God damn, bro. Like he's making everybody look bad. That's not me, though. I swear to God, man. If I ever act like that, please come tell me. <sighs> Nevertheless, though, Randy Orton ended up hitting him with an RKO. I mean, this moron started barking in his face like a dog. And, you know, Randy Orton was like, <laughs> and the RKO was on the announcement table. And then he gets back into the ring, and Logan Paul was waiting for him. He ended up, uh, actually, I like this spot, too. I take that back. Randy Orton, or Kevin Knowens, he caught Randy Orton, right? And he went for a pop-up powerbomb on Randy Orton. And as he throws him up in the air, Randy comes right back down with an RKO. 
That was lit as fuck, too. That's my favorite spot in the entire match. I like that a lot. That was a really, really fucking cool move. But unfortunately, Logan Paul, he recovered. He threw Randy Orton out of the ring, and then he hit a frog splash on KO to win the match. Again, fucking awesome match. This was a blast. Now, when I say it was better than a triple threat match at NXT, um, I thought it was a lot more, um, how can I put this? It wasn't better but it was a lot more funner, if that makes any sense, right? As a match, I thought the three-way at the NXT show was a was just objectively better, but this three-way was so much fun. I had a blast watching this match, and so far, probably top five best matches of WrestleMania weekend so far. But we do have EO Sky, and we do have Bailey. They're about to wrestle right now, so maybe they might prove me wrong. Who knows? Am I right? Not to mention, we still got a whole, like, it's 9.18 right now. I'm assuming they're going to go off the air around 11 or something like that, right? So we still got a whole, like, two hours left. So who knows how long this match might actually go? This might be a fucking classic. Who knows? We'll see, though. Let's get to the match. EO Sky versus Bailey. Make up for how WWE fucking screwed you over with Rhea and Becky. Let's see, bro. I got, I got confidence, though. I think these two are actually going to fucking kill it. But we'll see, though. But awesome three-way match, though. Really good shit. Okay, call me bias, call me bias, I understand, I get it, but for my taste in professional wrestling and what I like in my professional wrestling, I thought this match was better than Becky and Rhea yesterday. EO and Bailey, you can tell that they're friends in real life, because I don't think working with someone who you don't know, or at the very least who you're unfamiliar with, you're not going to potato them as much as these two potato the shit out of each other. The stiff fucking shots that EO and ba and Bailey were giving each other were fucking gnarly, bruh. I noticed, um, and I've seen this in Fire Pro Wrestling before. That's called the Maya uh, German Suplex, right? She didn't do it completely well because I think with the Maya German Suplex, you're supposed to do a, uh, like one German Suplex and then you float over and then you do another German Suplex, which puts you into like a Japanese rolling clutch type of pin, almost like. That's called the Maya German Suplex. I remember that move. And it's funny because, um, you know, when I seen that move for the first time, you know, it's funny. I, I wonder if they brought it up because I think that was Aja Kong's move back in the days, if I remember correctly. Aja Kong used to do that move a lot. As a matter of fact, I remember Awesome Kong when she was back in her heyday back in 2007. She did that move to Roxy Laveau. I don't know if you guys remember the girl Roxy, uh, Queen Roxy, the queen of extreme Roxy before Daphne. Um, I remember her doing that to her and I thought to myself, oh, that's really fucking cool. That's the fire pro wrestling move. And I'm not sure. I'm not saying if she did that and as a tribute to Aja, but knowing Bailey, she probably did it as a tribute to, or uh, excuse me, knowing, um, um, EO, she probably did it as a tribute to Aja Kong, most likely. But that was really, really fucking cool. Uh, you got a springboard from EO on the outside of the ring. As far as jumping off the barricade, got caught right into a Bailey to Bailey a bell Bailey to Belly suplex on the floor. I thought that was really fucking cool. Also, one of the dopest fucking moves, which I don't think no one's really gonna talk about. It was two really minuscule things. Well, one was actually I think someone noticed, but one minuscule thing that I think uh, 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 EO did that I thought was really fucking cool. So like Bailey attempted like a Bailey to Belly suplex in the middle of the ring. And like she jumped over, it's kind of hard to it's kind of hard to say, bro. Bailey EO somehow got over her head. I think she was going for a Bailey to Belly suplex. She got over her head and caught her into like a rolling clutch pen, like like a Raw Van Dam esque roll up. You know how he does like the little leg roll on your stomach and rolls you up. She sort of kind of did that out of out of a Bailey to Belly. It was something fucking outrageous. It was really fucking cool that I'm not sure a lot of people caught. And then one of my favorite spots of the match, bro. This was fucking dope. Bailey tried to go for her rose plant move. Like, you know, the whole little fucking Dean Ambrose shit he used to do. But like, she put, you know, the rose plant. You've seen Bailey do it before. Fucking EO Sky hit a fucking head spring out of the fucking move. That was really, really, really fucking cool. I thought she connected it also, which made it even more cooler. I popped really hard for that shit. That was really dope. Uh, EO Sky did hit the over the um over the over the moonsault finish that she has. She hit it on Bailey. She got a near fall from it, and I like this too. 
So like she did her own version of the BME or um I don't know maybe Tiffany Stratton's I don't know moonsault. She kind of did her own fucking version. First she did one standing moonsault, then she did a springboard moonsault, and then she attempted another over the moonsault finisher until like she missed it, and then Bailey came and then finally hit the rose plant on her to get the victory. I love this match. I liked how stiff they were. I liked how they were taking influences from um, the strong style stuff of Japan, like in the good way. It wasn't like, you know, stupid strong style shit like you see nowadays. It was very, it's hard to explain. It was very Minami Toyota esque. It was very um, Super J Cup esque, if you will, where it's like, yes, they're doing the strong style stuff, but they're still selling, right? They're not just fucking going, hit me with your best shot, fire away. They're not doing any of that stupid shit. No, they're actually battling back and forth because it's a fucking fight, right? And they were stiffing the shit out of each other. I did really appreciate that a lot. That was really, really good. This entire match, the structure of it, again, was it, it I would, yeah. Yeah, I'd argue this, for me at least, I don't know for anyone else, I'd argue personally, now, I thought the finish to um, uh, Lyra Valkyria and uh, Roxanne Perez, I thought the last few minutes of that match was the best of any weekend, period, regardless of any women's match. Those last three or four minutes of that match was fucking amazing. But as an overall structure, I think this match was probably the best women's match of the entire weekend. Now, if you want to say Roxanne Perez and uh, Lyra Valkyria, you're not going to get an argument out of me because those last four or five minutes made that entire match. But I thought this match was what was way more consistent. The finish wasn't as good, although the finish was fine. The finish wasn't as good as that match at NXT, but I thought it was way more consistent than that match, if that makes any more sense, right? Again, good shit. Bailey's the new women's champion. She also has a new theme song, too, by the way. Uh, it sounds kind of, it's not, it doesn't sound like her old theme song, but it's like within the same genre, you know, and, you know, um, what early 2000s instrumental post grunge it, it, it still has that same type of feel but it's not quite the same thing song but overall though i'm, I'm kind of getting carried away i have to get ready to get ready for the mini event i thought the entire match was fine i thought both girls went out there and they fucking killed it i thought both girls fucking delivered they made up for the story that was lacking again it would have been a lot better if the story was actually good as far as building up to the match in itself but obviously i can't hold that up i can't hold that against them that's all back on creative but as far as a match in itself yeah they went out there and they did their thing and good shit that's all i gotta say is good shit but with that being said folks it's that time now i see the promo package it's 9 43 man cody rhodes roman reigns shit or get off the pot. All these years of Roman Reigns, all these months of being champion, challenger after 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 challenger, and I'm not even exaggerating saying it that many times, I'm probably missing more challengers. We now have made it to this point. I feel like there is only one decision to be made that is coherent and con and conflates with the story. There's no other decision to be made. Now, if they do go the other way, oh, you're going to get a rant like you've never gotten before. It's going to be one of my biggest rants I've ever made in my entire life if Roman Reigns retains his championship belt. But as much as I do not like Cody Rhodes, as much as I don't care for Cody Rhodes, <sighs> This is his moment. Make it or break it. Get in and get out. Not only am I expecting the consequences and the results for this match to hit what I believe it's going to hit, but I'm expecting this to be one of the most wildest, craziest, ridiculous matches in the history of professional wrestling. Yes, I said it. I'm expecting a lot of chaos in this match. This match has to deliver in more ways than one. Like I said, not only does the finish have to be that way as far as Cody winning the match, but I feel like in order to kick off his reign in the appropriate way, this has to be one of the best matches in WrestleMania history and therefore one of the best matches in wrestling history. 
Will it hit that five-star peak like it should be aiming to be hitting? We'll see directly after this. Folks, here we are. The WrestleMania main event, Cody Rhodes versus Roman Reigns. Like I said, make it or break it. Let's get it going. That was one of the most overbooked, craziest, goddamn awesome main events I've, bro, the fucking chaos in this match was insane and off the fucking chart. It's like Vince Russo rode out of his grave, even though he's still alive, and decided to just mesh a little bit with Paul Heyman. You know, he decided to mesh a little tiny bit with any other fucking creative team, book or whatever the case may be. This shit kicked all kinds of fucking ass. The story, it was like a fucking movie, like a final boss. Like, bruh, you know what this reminded me of? You know, you know what I was thinking of as far as how everything was going off? You guys ever seen, I'm, I'm pretty sure you have, The Lion King, right? Where you have Simba, who leaves and never comes back again because Scar kicks him out. Scar kicks him out as a little baby. They run him off. Simba leaves. Simba goes away. He tries to find himself. And he knows sooner or later he has to come back. Yes, it's comfortable to live in the wild. Yes, it's comfortable to be with your friends. But you have to come back home to reclaim your throne. And then Simba comes back and he realizes that everything is in shambles. His people, they're being treated and abused. And all the hyenas, they're taking over everything. The hyenas are ruining his father's kingdom. The kingdom that his own father built who died in the process of building all of this. And who's the man that is in charge? Who's the leader currently with all the chaos that's currently going on? It's Scar. It's Roman Reigns. And what does Simba have to do in order to reclaim his throne? To, 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 to really fill the shoes that his father has set for him to take heed of. He has to defeat the guy who is now currently the ruler. Cody Rhodes is Simba. Scar is Roman Reigns. And they battle it out. But of course the hyenas have to attack. Scar's minions, his fiends, his ghouls, they have to attack Simba. They can't do it by themselves. Scar can't do it by himself. He can't kill Simba by himself. And what happens? All Simba's friends come and it's the hyenas versus the lions. It's Cody's guys versus Roman's guys. And you get all kinds of fucking chaos ensuing. You have Jimmy Uso coming out, almost costing Ro uh, Cody Rose, just like he's done it, everybody else for these past few years. And what happens? What happens during that? Jay Uso comes out and he takes out Jimmy Uso, spear off the stage, through a couple of tables down below on the floor. Cody Rose still thinking he has the advantage. He goes for crossroads multiple times again. And what happens? Solo Sokoa almost screwing Cody Rose over the same way how he screwed him over last year. And who comes out? Who helps him out? John fucking Cena comes out. And he takes out Solo Sokoa. He hits an AA on him through the announcement table. He's down and out. But no, we have to keep this going. The Rock comes out. The Rock, the main hyena, comes out. Timon and Pumbaa, they're hiding behind the cage, or I guess it would have been the fucking parrot and, Pum and, and Timon. They're behind the bars. They're afraid. And here comes Pumbaa. Here comes Pumbaa. Rock takes out John Cena, right? John Cena is now clear. He's gone. The Rock, he's about to whip Cody Rose ass some more, just like he did last night. And what happens? The Undertaker. The Undertaker appears in the middle of the ring and he hits the rock with a choke slam and i love how it goes off and it comes back to the middle of the ring when it goes pitch black dark and all you see is the rock's belt that says mama rose right there in the middle of the ring with cody rose in the back room just in the back blurred image and everything on the horizon right next to the belt great camera work and now it's down to roman and cody 
No more. The fire is surrounding everybody. Everybody's taking care of each other. It's Scar and it's Simba. One on one. What's gonna happen? What's gonna happen? Simba defeats Scar. And his palace is gone. His kingdom has now fallen. He is done. It's over. The rain pours. But out of the rain comes a rainbow. Cody Rhodes defeats Roman Reigns. And what had to be one of the most damnedest storytelling matches I think I've ever seen. That was fantastic. Some may call it overbooked, but guess what? It's okay. Overbooked is okay. That's fine. If you know what you're doing in regards to the storytelling and the excitement, no one gives a fuck. AEW, all you wrestling fans, hear me out. Please, please watch this match. Hear the crowd. Hear the, see the pop and circumstances. See how excited everyone is getting. No one cares about your traditional bullshit, stupid ass wrestling. This is this is a movie. You're watching a movie unfold before your very eyes. That's what this is. That's it's a movie, and it's a movie with a conclusion that needed to happen. Look. You don't have to like Cody Rhodes. I'm not the world's biggest Cody Rhodes fan, but it needed to happen. It needed to happen that way because in the end of the day, this is a movie. Roman Reigns has held that belt hostage for nearly four years. This is the conclusion that needed to happen. This is what needed to happen. Whether you like it, whether you hate it, it needed to happen for the story to make sense. It's not even going on the whole meme rant of he needs to finish his story. No, it had to happen that way. There was no other decision that would have made sense. There's no other reason that would have made sense. Cody winning that belt not only relinquishes Roman Reigns from what I have to believe in real life has to hold him hostage. He wants to leave. He wants to go do his thing. He talked about his chemotherapy yesterday. He wants to go. Let Cody Rhodes have a chance, and I'm willing to give him a chance. Am I the world's biggest Cody Rhodes fan? No. But the story spoke for itself. Everything happened for a reason. Cody Rhodes won the belt, and now it's his turn. It's his era, and we're going to see where this goes going forward. That match was spectacular. From how it built for the first 15 to 20 minutes with just straight up wrestling between the two. Fighting in the crowd. You got tables, you got candlesticks, you got all this stuff going around. For them to build up after 20 minutes of wrestling. Cody Rhodes hitting Roman Reigns with a spear. Roman Reigns hitting Cody Rhodes with his own crossroads. The cursing, the swearing, the sweat. The only thing that you were really missing in this match was blood, honestly. The storytelling in this match was beyond off the charts. It was the conclusion that needed to happen for WrestleMania weekend. Not just WrestleMania, WrestleMania weekend. This all built up. The energy behind everybody, the energy behind the crowd, all of this needed to happen. Hate it or love it. You can talk about the future as much as you want. And you can say to yourself, well, let's see where Cody Rose takes us and I'll rub it in your face when he fucking fell. So that's fine. But we're talking about right now and what needed to happen right now. That needed to happen. And I love how everybody comes out to just go right back to the Lion King analogy. Everybody comes out. Simba's now picking up his, or the baboon, I guess, the monkey, picking up his son. The belt is the representation of Simba's new son, right? All the animal kingdom roaring up, embracing Simba as now the king. All the wrestlers coming out, embracing Cody Rose as the leader of the locker room, as the leader, as the face of WWE going forward. Can you tell me a better conclusion that should have happened? Whether or not you care for Cody Rose, for the love of God, let's stick to the fucking talking points. Right now, as in the main event tonight, can you tell me a better story that should have happened, that should have occurred? What should have been the conclusion? Would you have really had Roman Reigns go over right there because of what you feel is going to happen in the future with Cody Rhodes? We don't know. And if he fails, then God damn it, he fails. But you do not know what happens in the future. We're talking about the right now. As in what you just watched right now. 
what would have been a better finish? Are you sitting here and you're telling me, never mind Roman continuing on with his reign. You're sitting here with a straight face and you're going to sit here and tell me that going forward, that should have been the conclusion. Roman Reigns beating Cody Rhodes after the second year of beating him, after the story that was being told, after everything that happened in this match, you're going to sit here and say Roman should have won that match. You're delusional and I do not take you seriously as a wrestling fan. I don't. I don't take you seriously as a wrestling fan. You are not Nostradamus. I'm not Nostradamus. We're not future tellers. You're not clairvoyant. You're none of this shit. You are me watching TV and you're seeing a story play out and you need an appropriate conclusion and an ending to that story. Cody Rose is the new world champion. Whether you like it, whether you hate it, it was the appropriate conclusion to a story that has spanned over four years. Really, when you think about it, nearly a decade if you take into account Cody Rose leaving to have him go find himself. This had to happen the way it played out. Again, you don't have to like it. You don't have to love it. It's just called logic. And it is what it is. If he fails, he fails. And we could talk about it then. And I will be right there with you. But as of right now, that needed to be the story. And overall, WrestleMania Night 2 absolutely demolished WrestleMania Night 1, and it's not even close. This WrestleMania tonight elevated this WrestleMania so much more than what it needed to. WrestleMania 2 saved WrestleMania. This was a fucking awesome show, in my opinion. I want to say, well, let me take that back. The main event put it over the edge as far as it being awesome. This was actually a pretty average show for the most part before this main event happened. Solid matches, but it was this main event that put it completely over the top. And it's going to round out its average to probably around a 7.75, where originally I would have probably given it like a 7 had it not been for the main event. But the main event, masterpiece, chef's kiss of a fucking work. Puts it completely over the top. For now, it's now, in my opinion, a solid WrestleMania. Thanks to that main event alone. If you're a wrestling fan, I highly recommend to go watch this main event. It has everything that you want. You want hardcore wrestling? It has that. You want the indie moves? It has that. You want the storytelling? It has that. You want the, nost the nostalgia? It has that. Everything that was appropriate for a wrestling match to have, as far as tools is considered, it has it. And hell, I'll even recommend watching night one first before going into this so you can have an appropriate story and an appropriate linear correlation between both stories. This was fantastic. This was a nice match. And this was a night, not match. This is a nice event overall. And that main event will go down as one of the better WrestleMania main events. Let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. I'm excited. I want to see where they go forward with this. I got to watch Raw tomorrow and I want to see where they go forward with this. I'm very curious. I would definitely say there's a, a smidge. There's a smidge of hope that has now glared this ugly head inside of my body as a wrestling fan. That's what that main event did for me. It gave me a slimmer of hope to at least give WWE a chance to at least see what they're going to do going forward. Is this really the start of a new era? We'll find out tomorrow when we watch Raw. I can't think of a better epilogue for this entire vacation. And what a way to end a vacation. What a way to end all the videos that I've done this week with a main event like that. Let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. I'll be back tomorrow for Raw. Uh, that was a great main event. That's how it's done. That, that's how it's done. As always, my name is Devontae, and I'll be catching you guys later. Deuces. Peace.